Hey, Chef Dom here with 12 Tomatoes, here to show you a really great pasta recipe. We are gonna be making a noodle called Raschiatelli. Uh, this is a noodle that's a really long, circular noodle. Um, nice tubular style, very like long beefaroni, if you will. Um, and then we're gonna toss it in a nice spicy arrabbiata sauce. Arrabbiata meaning angry in Italian, basically is just a spicy marinara sauce. Uh, we're gonna add in some peppers and some good things, but first we're gonna get to some pasta. Raschiatelli is this really old Roman style way of rolling pasta over a skewer. And you see a lot of these pasta grannies on YouTube rolling them out and it just looks so fun and I like had to do it. All you do is you need a little bit of semolina, some water, some salt, and a, and a wooden skewer. And I personally love not having to pull out like a pasta roller to roll sheets of pasta to make homemade pasta. So let's get started. Here I have this beautiful bowl of semolina flour. So semolina flour is a wheat flour, even though it looks like cornmeal, it is a wheat flour. It's made from durum wheat, which is just uh, more of an Italian wheat than what we are used to using here. So three ingredients, this is so, so simple. All we're gonna do is take our semolina. So we're gonna start by mixing our dry ingredients together as we normally do. So just putting a little bit of salt into our semolina here. Giving it a little rough mix. And then we're just gonna add in our water. So this is about a cup and a half of semolina to about a half cup of water. You don't need to do this any particular way. This is going to be a sticky baby dough. You just want to take it nice and slow, get it all hydrated, and then form it into a dough. Okay. Oh, that came together so easily. So we're just gonna put this out on our bench. This dough is really important to kind of keep on the bench because what we need to do is we need to knead it together. So we need this dough to come together. We need to develop some of that initial gluten development. By just giving this a nice knead. So to knead some dough, all you wanna do is you wanna Turn the dough, flip it over on itself, and using the heel of your hand, just push down. Twist and push. And look at how great this dough is coming together. Now we have an actual dough. And you wanna knead this until it gets really hard to knead. Again, we're developing gluten, and gluten is going to make the dough get tough Gluten is gonna make the dough feel tougher and tougher. So you just wanna keep kneading until that dough becomes a little bit drier and a little bit more tough. So how do we check for that? What we do is we're gonna just put an indent with our finger and see if it springs back. So indent, spring. Indent, spring. Kind of like what you would look for with like fish when you're touching it for doneness. This is our perfect starting dough. And all we need to do, we'll just take the bowl that we rested it in and we're gonna just cover this for about 30 minutes. Let it rest, let it chill, and then we'll get back to it. All right, so we're moving on to the arrabbiata sauce. Red sauces, tomato sauces, they do not have to be cooked for very long for there to be enough flavor. All we wanna do is evaporate out some of that extra water that comes in the canned tomato um, so we can concentrate that tomato, that umami flavor into our marinara. For those of you who've never heard of arrabbiata sauce, arrabbiata is an angry sauce in Italian. So angry means how spicy you wanna make it. I like it a nice spice, especially using different um, peppers to make that happen. In this recipe, we have some crushed red pepper and we have some chopped red chilies. You can use whatever chilies you like. You can omit the chilies if you want to. Um, it just adds such a nice brightness to pair with the tomato. And then when we finish it with a little lemon juice right at the end, it just makes this sauce 
so much more elevated than just your typical red sauce or marinara or gravy. What we're gonna do is we're first gonna just get a, a pan really nice and hot. We're gonna add a little bit of oil to this pot. And then we are going to add in our peppers. We're gonna add in our crushed red pepper flakes. So crushed red pepper flakes, depending on the color, are gonna tell you the spiciness. So make sure you taste your crushed red pepper flakes. Make sure you know that they're not too old. We have a little bit of an old crushed pepper flake here. Uh, so I'm adding in about a half a teaspoon to go in with our red chilies just to add a little bit more depth of flavor with our spicy. And then we're also gonna add in some garlic. Can't be an Italian sauce without garlic. How much is up to you? I would say start at four cloves and go up. Just give this a nice little mix. And then we wanna do, we don't wanna burn anything. We wanna take this nice and slow. So we are just gonna put this heat on about a medium low. Let this go. While that's going, we're gonna talk about our tomatoes. Here we have whole canned tomatoes. Um, these are amazing, and I encourage everybody to switch to them for whatever tomato product they're using besides, I would say, tomato paste. This just gives you the most versatile option when you are making um, a red sauce, and you can just use the tomato if you want to make a sauce, to have a, a nice, thick, chunky sauce, or you can just use that juice, that juice has very low iron tasting that I feel like most canned tomatoes do have. So it actually adds such a sweetness and a freshness to it. But what I like to encourage people, especially for this recipe, I want you to get in there with your hands, like I'm going to, and just fully hulk out these tomatoes and just squeeze them in your hand. This is the fun part of cooking. I feel like sometimes we get so caught up in being so correct with all of our ingredients, especially following recipes that we don't, we forget to have fun with cooking. So make sure you have some fun, get the kids in here, squeezing some tomatoes. I'm having a blast. So I am just gonna squeeze these until most of the tomato is broken up. There are not too big of strands in here. But again, even if there is, it's not that big of a deal. This is your sauce. You make it how you want to. Ooh, this looks so good. So now we have this nice soupy mix. We're gonna put it into this beautiful caramelized veg situation that we have. This will always splash back at you, so make sure that you dump in your product on the side of the pan, just so that it doesn't go all over the place. We're gonna raise up our heat. We wanna bring this up to a boil. Just stir this around really nicely. Such a simple tomato sauce. And this is how you could start, you should start every tomato sauce, just with a little bit of aromatics and some oil, toasting up those flavors before you add in the tomato. It really makes a difference. That oil infuses with all those flavors and just disperses that throughout the tomato. So another thing I like to do, I just like to pick off stems of basil and throw them in. We don't need to chop them up because I'm gonna remove them and we're gonna garnish with a little bit of basil um, because the basil just tends to get like really dark in here and it's not super cute, uh, but we really do want that like basil-y flavor. If you had like a, a parm rind, this it would go great in here right now. This is kind of like my bay leaf moment for our Arabiata. So as this is cooking, we wanna make sure that we season with a little salt and a little pepper. Anytime we're cooking something for over 30 minutes, we wanna make sure we do not salt it to uh, the full taste we wanna get it to, especially for this. We're gonna add a little bit of cheese at the end. That's gonna add a nice salty bite along with the salted water from our pasta that we make. We wanna bring this to a boil and reduce it to a simmer and then just let it simmer for I don't know, 20, 25 minutes, however much time you have. As long as you're happy with the consistency of the sauce, I'm happy. You also can take this sauce at the end and blend it with a immersion blender or use it like a full Vitamix and blend it all up to get a nice smooth puree. But I actually love the look of just seeing those whole tomatoes in that pasta sauce. It just 
brings me so much joy. Once this sauce has come to a close, we are gonna finish it with a little lemon juice. Um, acid, bringing acid back into the situation after cooking really acidic tomatoes helps really freshen up the whole dish. It's kind of like you're cooking the acid away from the can right now and then you're reintroducing the acid in the form of like fresh citrus in the end to really just spruce up all the flavors. Then we're also going to toss um, our pasta and sauce with a little Pecorino Romano cheese. Pecorino is such an amazing cheese. It's a sheep's milk cheese, so it does have a little funk to it. Gives you a very much petting zoo vibe, but it tastes so good. And the saltiness from this cheese just really makes this taste so different than a total marinara sauce. And that's my goal here, is to not make this just be another marinara sauce. Oh, it smells so good. We're bringing it up to a boil. I'm gonna just reduce this down to a simmer now. Okay, so even though we have to cook this sauce for um, 20 more minutes, it's still not gonna stop me from tasting it. We wanna see where we're at. Oh, oh my God. This is so amazing. It's good right now, honestly. Um, but I'm gonna still let it cook because I have the time and I still have to roll the noodles. So it's not gonna hurt it if I put it low and slow. The heat from those chilies is such a warm heat going down my throat. It is not a spicy lips burning kind of moment. This, I cannot wait to drench in some pasta. Oh my God. Okay, we're gonna put this, um, we're gonna let this simmer and we're gonna be right back. Okay, so we've let our dough rest for at least 30 minutes. Our dough is nice and soft. You, as soon as you touch it, you'll notice that this dough has gotten nice and pliable and it's gonna be much easier to work with. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this dough in half and then we're gonna cut this dough in half again. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this dough. So while we're working with this dough, we can put the rest of the dough underneath the bowl so it does not dry out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll. We're gonna roll a nice, nice log. All right, so about a half inch in diameter. We want just a nice little rope like this. Just a nice little rope. Then what we're gonna do with this rope is we're gonna cut this into pieces. Any thicker spots, just cut smaller pieces. And then when you get back down to the thinner, go back to cut. Using just my bench scraper and my eye to gauge the slice pieces. These do not have to be consistent, nor should they be. This is a rustic pasta. I'm going to put my skewer little baby skewer I have, right in the center of the dough. Collapse the dough on top, and then I'm just gonna take, using just all this part of my hand to roll the dough around the skewer. And just like that, wiggle it a bit to get off the skewer, and that's one. Starting with the side of your hand makes it a little bit easier when they're smaller pieces to just stretch it along and roll around the pasta. And you'll feel that thickness. It'll, it'll feel good, it'll feel nice and thin, feel tubular, you can make these as long as you'd like. There we go, another one. Okay, we got a nice long one here. And then you were just gonna throw them like this. You can get the whole family involved in this project. This is a nice time to just like sit here and roll pasta versus having to sheet it through a sheeter six different times, let it dry out, cut it, let that dry out. Okay, so all of our beautiful raschiatelli noodles are made. As you can see, there are these beautiful Bucatini-esque, beefaroni-like noodles. 
They have this nice hole in the middle of it so it can just, as it cooks, in some of the sauce when we pull it after it's al dente in the water, it'll suck up all of that sauce so there'll be kind of like juicy explosions of flavor. This is so, so good and so easy to make at home. Make a whole bunch, make a day out of it and freeze half of it for later. But this is what we have right now. This is about two portions of pasta here and uh, we are going to get some water boiling and salted to drop it in. It's only gonna cook for about a minute or so. We got our pasta water boiling. We have our pasta next to us. We have a little bit of sauce. We're gonna make this happen in two and a half minutes. Water's boiling, we're gonna add some salt. I'm sure you've heard this before, but you wanna make sure it is salted. Stop being so conservative with your salt. Your salted water needs to be salted. It needs to taste like salt. I've tried to explain this to my mother, so if mom, if you're watching, it needs to be salted. Still boiling, toss our pasta in there. Our noodles are in the water. We wanna just give them a quick mix so nothing is sticking to the bottom. Our general rule of thumb with fresh noodles is once they float to the top, they're basically al dente. And that's as long as we wanna cook them. We do not need to cook them until finish in the water because if we cook them until finish in the water, it's gonna be mush in the sauce. Our noodles are floating. We're gonna just start transferring them into our pan with sauce where we're gonna continue finish, we're gonna finish cooking. And then before you discard the water, even if you're about to strain this off, just in case, a little lifesaver of water. Just in case you over reduce this too much, we're just gonna finish this sauce up with some torn basil. A nice squeeze of lemon. Put your hand underneath the lemon as you squeeze so you don't get any seeds in there. Again, just brightening, brightening up this dish. Little pasta water. And then a little bit of Pecorino Romano. Okay, since we just added the water into the pasta, we wanna give the, this pasta some time to evaporate out that water we just added in there. So we want to bring this to the boil. We wanna finish this for a couple minutes in with this hot sauce so that the sauce has a chance to coat each noodle and that noodle has a chance to suck up all of that sauce inside. Finish it off with some fresh, some freshly grated Pecorino Romano. And if you're not a fan of Pecorino Romano, Parmesan absolutely works here. But make sure you buy the fresh stuff. And then we're just gonna garnish with a little more basil. These tiny basil leaves actually have the most basil flavor. And that's Raschiatelli alla Arabiata. Uh, this dish is so easy as you saw us to make a very quick tomato sauce, a really fun noodle to roll. This is gonna be just as fun to eat as it was to make. So let us know if you make this at home. Tell us about it, tell us what you thought, and uh, thanks for coming. 12 tomatoes.